So what were we talking about Monday? Okay, so let's 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 even take a step back further than that. What were those for? What what are we in the biggest picture in the biggest sense, what are we doing right now? In the biggest sense of things. Yeah, Paul? No, actually, that's not what we did Monday. We weren't finding probabilities or percentages on Monday. We kind of did that toward the end of the first exam, and then right after the first exam, but now we're on to something new. What was the big picture of what we're doing? Estimating stuff. Okay, getting closer. Estimating the population. That doesn't really, what do you mean? Okay, so she's saying that the statistics for the population, the mean and the standard deviation. Is it both of those? Okay, but we're going to what were we doing on Monday? Okay, so she's, she's the closest. What is it that we were doing on Monday? Of the what? Of the no. Determining our confidence level or in predicting what? Yes. We were predicting the mean of the population, right? Inferential statistics means you take a sample. And from the sample, you're trying to glean information about the whole population, right? This is this makes sense, right? Because like you can't you can't find out every all the data for the whole population because sometimes populations are hundreds of tens and hundreds of thousands and even millions, right? So what do we do? We take a sample, and then from the sample, we try to figure out stuff about the population. So specifically, we're trying to figure out what about the population. What's that? The mean, okay? So we're just that that's our goal. Can we figure out what the population mean is? All right, so we take a sample, and what do we do with the sample to try to figure out the population mean? Very logical. Find the mean of the sample. This is our best guess. This is the, what we call that. So that what do we call that as a best guess for the population mean? Remember what we call that? No, nope, just just the mean itself. Remember that, what that was called? Point estimate, right? So we take the sample mean, and that's our best guess at the population mean. We call that a point estimate of the population mean, okay? All right, so then, uh, I think it's back here somewhere. Is, is the sample mean, the point, the, the, is that point estimate, that sample mean, is it the population mean? Very unlikely. If it's a best guess, it's, it's going to be probably close, right? So then we, we take it a step further and we say, all right, rather than say this is our best guess at the mean, let's set up a, an interval where we think where we can be a certain amount confident that the population mean lies in that interval. Okay, so, so we do the point estimate, and that's, that's the best guess we have. But then we set up an interval and we say, all right, we can be so such and such confident that the population mean falls in that interval. So remember this picture here. <clears throat> here were 20 samples. Here, were, this was 20 samples. Taken, they were all, um, yeah, so the 20 samples, and we got all the different sample means. And then these were all the confidence intervals where the population mean was 65. And so this was, these were 95% confidence intervals, meaning 
given that given that confidence interval of 95 percent that the population mean falls within the interval and so when we did 20 we got about 95 percent of them to have the population mean in that range and only one of them a five five percent didn't capture that confidence interval did not capture the that's why we're only 95 percent confident because there is a chance that we could come up we could end up with an interval that doesn't capture the population mean like that red one right so it's it's not that we when we set up this interval we say the population mean is in this interval it's that we're 95 percent sure it's in the interval here's an example where it may not be. Here's the 5% where it didn't work, right? Here's the 5% of the time where it didn't work. We got this interval, and the population mean didn't fall in the interval. Why? Because that sample just happened to collect a lot of high data. And that's going to happen once in a while. Every once in a while, you're going to get a lot of high data, or you're going to get a lot of low data all in the same sample. And then your confidence interval is going to miss, right? It's going to miss the population mean. Okay, so that's what we're doing right now. We are using a sa sample data to estimate the, the sample or the population mean and build an interval where, where we can be have some degree of confidence that the population mean lies in that interval. So let's uh, and we, so we came up with these Z scores for these intervals. So for the 90 percent interval, we came up with... The z-score. What was the z-score for the 90% interval? Z was plus or minus what? What was it? 1.64. 1.64. So we figured out that um, if you had a 90% confidence interval, that meant how much, what percent lie here? It's a 95% confidence interval, confidence interval. What percent lies to the right Okay, I heard 5 and 10. Which one is it? 5, because you're going to have 5 on either side, right? If it's 90% in, in, the, in the shaded there, then you're going to have 5% there, 5% there. So this is really Z of what? 0 0.05. Because we wanted 5% to the right. 5% to the right is the same Z that will give you 90% of the our confidence in the middle. All right, and then we did, you guys figured out the 95% C-scores for a 95% confidence interval. So it's going to be Z of 0 0.025, good. And you guys found that that was plus or minus? 1.96. And then the 99% confidence interval would be Z of? Half of 1%, right? Half of 1%, 0 0.005. And that would be 2.58. Plus or minus 2.58. And what do we say? We said we never have to calculate those again. These are the most common confidence intervals that we build, 90, 95, and 99%. And the z-scores will always be these scores for those confidence intervals. Question. Yeah. On one of the exercises, and it tells you to clear for 90%, but it, it only uses 1.64. It doesn't round up to 1.65. Oh, in the my stat lab? Yeah. So you, you tried 1.64 or 5, and you got the wrong answer, but then 1.64 gave you the right right answer? Yeah. Okay, so be careful of that. That's why I said 1.64. All right, okay. Um, so 1.645 is more... Oh, but maybe... So did you... Were you rounding to the right number of decimal places in terms of what they asked for in the answer? That's right. One decimal point, but when you're when you're figuring out the formula, mm -hmm. it uses 1.64 instead of 1.64. Okay, so just be aware of that. I think I get. I think on this one, you have five attempts on every problem. So if you, if you if you so you figured it out, I think you have enough you have enough cushion there to. But 1.645 is more is more accurate z-score for 90%. I'm not really sure why they're using 1. or 1.645 is more accurate, but um, if be aware of that. It might to get the right answer. She's saying you might need 1.64, and you, like I said, in your attempts, you have enough cushion to to get get it right. So, question, other questions on that? Okay, so let's uh, 
So I think we ended on this example. Is that right? We did the age of... This is the last one we did. So let's... Oh, let's go back. So here's just a summary. So uh, by doing... We had, the, we had some mean, right? We had this the uh, sample mean. And what did we do? If it's a 90% confidence interval, we said that that's 1.645. And what is that number, 1.645? 1.645 what? Right. Z is always measuring how many standard deviations. And so we would go up. Um, one and what what standard deviation are we using? We're using the standard deviation for the sampling distribution, right? So we go up 1.645 standard deviations of the sampling distribution. It depends on how big the sample is. If you've got bigger sample, you're going to be your um, confidence intervals can get more precise, right? If you have a big, if larger and larger samples, means you can hone in on the hone in on that population mean with a smaller interval for the same confidence. Okay, and so the the size of the sample matters. And then we're going to go down that number of standard deviations. So that's the idea of building the confidence interval. If it's a 90% confidence interval, we're going to go up and down 1.645 standard deviations from our sample mean to build the interval. So let's start off. You guys try another example. Let's do uh, this one. So this is a sample of three, six, seven, eight, nine. Looks like eighteen. So this is eighteen capital investments in a certain the certain business sector yielded. Uh, this is the following data. These are all millions of dollars. And so here, this is our sample of eighteen investments and their yields. We want a 95% confidence interval for the mean amount. And the population standard deviation is 2.04. And you're going to need this. The sum of the data is, if you added all those up, you get 113.97 million. And we're going to build the 95% confidence interval. Who doesn't have a sheet? So do this on the sheet. If I always... Uh, I always encourage you to put it in your notes as well. You got a sheet? Work together. What did you guys get for the sample mean? The sample mean? Yeah. 6.33? And what did you get for the standard deviation of the sampling distribution? 0.485? Four eight five? Four eight zero.
Oops. Oh. Okay, so you should have gotten a point estimate for the population mean of 6.33. Right? The sample mean is our best guess at what the population mean is. And so there it is right there. But building on that, we want to come up with a range, a range of values for which we can be 95% sure the population mean falls in that range. That's what we're talking about. We want a range of values that we can say we're 95% sure, and that's pretty dang good, right? 95% is pretty high. 95% sure that the population mean falls in this range. Okay, so what did we, so how do we do that? Well, for 95% confidence, our Z values are plus or minus 1.96 from the point estimate. Plus or minus 1.96 standard deviations from the point estimate. So we need the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, which depends on the sample size of 18. And you should have gotten the, the sampling distribution, standard deviation was 0.481. Did you get that? So from there, what we're going to go up, from 6.33, we're going to go up 1.96 of those, right? 1.96 of those, almost two of those, right? Almost two 0.481s up from 6.33. That'll give us our top of our confidence interval. And what do you get when you do that? Nice and loud. 2.7? Awesome. So you're going to take 1.96 standard deviations, where our standard deviation is for the sampling distribution. So 1.96 times 0.481 added to 6.33, and then that same value subtracted from 6.33. And what do you get for that? 5.39. 5.39. So who can interpret what this thing means? So what did we just do? It's not just all numbers and calculations and answers, right? This is all meaningful and useful, right? And we, so we, we're the managers of that, so we have to understand it. What did we just, who can explain what we just found? Randy. Yep, and our best guess at the population mean is 6.33. Our best guess is 6.33, and we're 95% sure that the actual population mean falls between 5.39 and 7.27. Any questions? So this is what uh, millions and dollars of these, you know, these investments. <coughs> questions. Okay, so now something new. There's something called the question. Do we need to draw the line for every problem, or it's only the same values? You're talking about the little vertical lines? I mean, it's just... Yeah, so yes, this is a nice visual for what we're doing. So you think about the, the population mean falls somewhere on this, on, this, in, on this line in between these two values. So that's, that's a nice thing to do. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so something new now. So for this 95% confidence interval, we have what's called a margin of error. margin of error 
how much space we have for error here. So how, how much room do we have for error so that the population mean falls in this? How much space do we have? How much error could we have from of the 6.33 so that the population mean would fall inside of our interval? So it's this much. Uh, no, it's not. It's not. Um, it's not five percent. It's this value right here. This is the margin of error. And how did you get that? I took uh, the standard deviation of the mean times the 1.96. Yep, it's that number that you added to 6.33 to get the 7.27. Is that the same thing? What you added to 6.33 to get the 7.27 is the margin of error. So that the, the, the margin of error is a value like your data. It's a value like your data, so it's in millions of dollars. And you said it was 1.9 or 0.9 something? 0.9473. What is that? Millions of dollars, right? That 0.943 is the number that's like your data. It's a, it's a, and, and it's how far, how far you can go from the point estimate to still be in the 95% confidence interval. So it's, it's how much, how much room you have to, for that 6.33 to be off, right? How much room does this 6.33 have to be off from the population mean so that we're, we're the population mean fell in the interval? So 9.433 up, 0.943 up. And that's also the margin of error going that way. So how does the margin of error relate to the entire width of the confidence interval? How does the margin of error relate to this whole width of this confidence interval? She says half. Oh, is that what you said? No. Half. Yes. It's half the width of the confidence interval because it's the distance from the point estimate, the, the mean of the sample, out to the ends. So this E, you can find it two ways. E is half the width of the, of the interval. Why? Because from 5.39 to 7.27 is 2E, 2 times E. Okay. Or it's the, the number you use to add to 6.33 to get 7.27. So that was your 1.96 times 4.481. That's the other way to think about E, this margin of error. And it's always in the units of your data. It's not, it's not percent unless your data is percent. Okay, So it's, unless, if your data is percent, then it will be a percent. But in this case, it was our data was in millions of dollars. So 0.943 millions of dollars is the margin of error for this for the estimate 6.33. Does it make sense? Okay, so let's try another example. It confuses you with the questions because on some of the questions it asks you to now divide the length of the confidence interval by two to find the margin of error. Okay. Then it asks you to find the margin of error using the formula. Right. I just yeah, that's that's important that you know that it can be found two ways. It's not confused. It's it's about understanding that, that there's two ways to look at it. It's the margin of error is twice the distance across the interval. You see that? Because from here to here is E, and from here to here is E. So the whole interval is two E. So wouldn't so to find the margin of error, couldn't you subtract five three nine from seven two seven and divide by two? Yeah. That's that's saying that it's half the dis that you just took the half the distance from there to there. That's what you did. You took that minus that divided by two. So that's what you did. You just took half the distance. But the other way is it's to find this number seven point two seven. It's what you added to six point three three when you did the calculations. It's what you added to that to get that. So you need to you need to have both perspectives on it. Other questions? Okay, so let's do another example. Oh, please. Uh, with the margin of error, yeah. would you put that line segment in the middle being like one half E uh, so that that way like half of that line segment would be going uh, towards the negative side of things and then the other half would be going towards the positive side of things? Um, so what I drew down here is 
how you would kind of visualize it. E is the distance from the point estimate to the, to the end. It doesn't matter what end. It's the distance from the point estimate out to the end of your interval, which makes the total interval a width of 2E. Does that answer it? <laughs> yeah. So the, the, and you, if you want to visualize the, the, the margin of error on your confidence interval, this is exactly how to do it. It's, the, it's how far you go from the point estimate out to the, to the ends of your interval. Or what you added to 6.33. So what did we add to 6.33 to get 7.27? What did we add? We added? Okay, and where did that 0.94 come from? How did we get, what did you add to 6.33 to, to get the 7.27? That's what E is, and what did, what did you do to do that? Z. Z times yep the sampling distribution standard deviation so that's what e is that's what you added to the point estimate x bar to get the 7.27 and it's what you subtracted to get the 5.39 okay make sense so let's try another one Let's do uh, 8.36. And then also part two, report the margin of error. So the A, obtain the 99% confidence interval. B, um, Report the margin of error. Okay, I'm not. I, when you guys are done, I'm not going to do this one. You got it. You're. This is on you now. Okay. Five minutes. Five minutes. Yes, on the blue sheet. And, and I will not be doing this. You have to have some confidence. No pun intended. Okay. So here's just a visual review of that. That's what we said, right? We said the margin of error was the number of standard deviations you're, uh, times, right? It's what it's in the same units. This is the key. That number, that margin of error, is in the same units as your point estimate. So if it's, so if it's. Uh, If this was the number of students, say, if this was the number of students, then that would be a number of students, okay? And so that is the Z times the, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. So just, it's just a review slide there. We already talked about it. So... If you take that formula and change it around, what did we have? We had E equals So what's going on here is we have three things all at the same time. Your confidence your precision And so what factors play into confidence and precision? So confidence is, like, that's like 90%. Okay, so this is, uh, I'll let you all, if you want to copy that down, you can copy that down. Then I'll talk so you can listen. I often talk about something different than what's on the screen, and then you're copying, and this is, that's just futile. Okay, that's what I wanted to talk about. Yeah, that's the next thing I want to talk about. But I don't want to talk about that while people are writing, because then people won't listen. But yes, that's, that's what I want to talk about. Does Z also overshoot? Um, like, the, the quantity of Z 
No, that's the subscript. That's the Z. This whole thing is the Z. Okay, ready? So if I were to draw these three confidence intervals all for the same point estimate of the, of the population mean, okay? Of those three, which one would be the 90%, which one would be the 95%, and which one would be the 99% confidence interval? Which one of these, could, can you match the three different ones that we've talked about, 90, 95, and 99, to these three intervals? What do you think? What do you think the top one is? 90. So I heard 90 and I heard 99. Is that the 90% confidence interval or the 99% confidence interval? What would make sense? If you make a shorter interval, are you more or less confident that the population mean falls in that interval? More or less? If you make a shorter interval, less confidence. Right? You're less confident that it would fall in there. You're, 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 you're demanding more precision, right? You're demanding more precision. You're saying, I need it to be closer. So does that mean you're less or more confident that it's in there? Less. So which confidence interval is this? 90. The short one is the 90%. The longest one would be the 99%. So makes sense. You're giving more. You're giving more room for error. So you're more confident that your population mean falls in there, right? This is a bigger standard or margin of error. If you allow for more error, then you can be more confident that your population mean falls in there. This would make perfect sense. But if you if you have a less margin for error, then you can't be as confident that the population mean falls in there. So which one of those is demanding the greatest precision? Which one has the greatest precision? This one, the smallest one. So in the smallest one, you're demanding, you're saying, I want, I want the point estimates. I want my population mean to be closer to the point estimate. Well, then you can only, you can, then you have to be less confident that it's there. So this is, so more, pre, more, more precision means less confidence. Uh, it, um, we're not measuring it with a value. We're just talking in generally. Yeah, but good question. More precision would mean less confidence, and similarly, less precision. You gain confidence. That's like the ninety-nine. That's like this one down here. Or so, did I say less? More? Just anywhere. So, but there's something else involved too. How could we um, increase our precision and maintain the confidence? In what way? So how could we increase our precision, make, get a smaller confidence interval, um, but maintain the same amount of confidence? What else would need to change? What, what else could we change that would help us do that? So I want to, I want to keep, I want to, get a smaller interval. I want to be more sure, or uh, let's see, I want to be more precise about my point estimate, but I don't want to lose confidence. How could that be possible? What would I, what would I need to change in the scheme of things? Sampling your sample size. Yeah, right. So what would we need to do to the sampling size so that we could be more precise and hold the same amount of confidence? Make the sample size bigger or smaller? Bigger. 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 So this is what this is about. Uh, well, the margin of error is determining that that's exactly what the confidence interval is, right? The margin of error is a ref is just a number that's telling you what your confidence interval is, right? 
because it's 2 times e is the width of it. You see? So that, that e and confidence are like one and the same. The, the value e and, and your confidence interval are kind of one and the same. So if, we, if this formula then is, is derived from this one, and it tells you what sample size you need, n, in order to have a certain margin of error and a certain amount of confidence based on z. Oh, so precision, right? So E is, reflect, is reflecting, reflecting precision, and the Z value that you choose reflects the confidence. So for a given precision, E, and a given confidence, Z score, this tells you what's a, the minimum sample size you need to have those together. Does that make sense? So for a given standard, for a given margin of error, or, a, or precision, and a given confidence level based on a z-score, this formula then tells you what samples, how big of a sample size you're going to need to have those two things together. Anybody have a question on that? Okay. Last chance? Okay. All right, now there's, there's something about these problems that's kind of weird. If, I don't know if anyone's thought of this. But what are we saying? We're saying <clears throat> that we're taking information about the sample to infer about the population, right? We're trying to figure out what the population mean is. But what have we always known in all these problems? What have we known? The standard deviation for the... Okay, so if we only had a sample, how would we know the standard deviation of the population? Right? So these, these problems are kind of a little bit weird or kind of unrealistic. It's like they're kind of impractical because it's like we've got this huge population. We're taking a sample and we're trying to infer from the sample about the population. But in, but in all these problems... We, no, in these problems, we we know what the how how would we know what the standard deviation of the population is? So, like, let's look at this one. Um, look, how do we know that? What about this one? I mean, this is the uh, the Rolling Stone ones you did, right? So, um, recall that. So this is a little bit, it's a little bit strange, a little bit weird that we would, we would know that. So what's more realistic is we just have the sample and we only have, we only have the information that we can glean from the sample. Okay. So that's what we're going to do next. So we want to build confidence intervals for the population mean when the population standard deviation is unknown, which is like kind of more realistic. We're going we're gonna to get all the information from the sample to make our estimate about the population mean. Does the premise make sense now? Is that what we're talking about? So it's kind of like what we were doing before is, is pretty theoretical, and this is becoming more realistic. It's more realistic that we would not know just by taking a sample, we would not know the population standard deviation. Okay, so what this means is, so here, here's the, um, the purpose is to find a confidence interval for a population mean mu. So we're doing, we have the same goal as before, same goal, okay? Assumptions. We have a simple random sample. We have a normal, normally distributed population or a large sample, and sigma is unknown. So now this is the new, the new assumption, which is kind of more realistic here, that sigma is unknown. Don't write this down. Listen. Okay. Don't write this. Listen. Okay. So what it means is 
To do this means instead of using the population standard deviation that we don't know, now we're going to use what? What's this? Sample. Sample standard deviation. Makes sense, right? Because that will, we can, we'll have that if we have the sample. And then the other difference is it's not based on a normal distribution anymore. We have a new distribution. It's called the T distribution. But you notice that it's the same principle. We're going to have our point estimate, and then we're going to add a certain number of standard deviations and subtract to get. And our standard deviation is going to be based on the sample standard deviation rather than the population standard deviation. <clears throat> so this it's, it's very similar. It's just that we have, uh, we're using the sample standard deviation, and it's, not, it's no longer a normally distributed uh, distribution that helps us find the confidence interval. It's a, it's a new distribution called the t-distribution. Okay, there's one more thing to this. When, when we're finding our t-value, we're going to need what's called the degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom is simply one less than your sample size. It's called the degrees of freedom. So whatever your sample size is, you're going to take one less than that, and that's for using the chart. Okay, That's for using the chart. You're going to need that to get the right T value out of the chart. We'll see that in a second. It's, that's not hard. Okay. But our goal is the same, and the general, the general idea is the same as what we just did. It's just that now we're it's kind of a more realistic situation where you don't know the population standard deviation. You use the sample standard deviation instead which require, requires that we use a new distribution to, to build the interval. Okay, <clears throat> so let's look at examples here. Any questions? All right, so let's use the first one. So here we've got our point estimate. So we have a, a mean a <coughs> sample of size 36, okay, sample of size 36. And the point estimate for the mean was 20. So we know our confidence interval is going to be built around 20, right? S is 3, and we want a confidence level of 95%. So before, we used the, what, Z of 0 0.025. That was the plus or minus 1.96. But now this is going to be different now, because now we're using the sample standard deviation instead of the population standard deviation. Okay, so how many degrees of freedom do we have? 19. Oh no, sorry, 35. 35. Okay. This is the point estimate. This is so yeah. I almost I said 19 too. Degrees of freedom freedom is 35. Okay. And so now this is that chart I just passed out to you. So we need to figure out what, for a confidence interval of 95, what is alpha? So what is alpha? So let's, I'm going to draw the picture. Look at the top of that page right there. So this is alpha. And so 95%. Right. So, so this right here, sorry, no, that's alpha. So if we want a 95% confidence interval, then what area is this red area here? Alpha equals half of 5%, right? Half of 5%, which is our 0 0.025. 
Okay, so that, do you see that that's the very middle column of your table? The very middle column of your table is T of 0 0.025. But then we need, <coughs> you need to go down that column <coughs> and find the, <coughs> the <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> that T score for 35 degrees of freedom. 2.030. So our T of 0 0.025 for 35 degrees of freedom is 2.03. <clears throat> okay, what about our sampling distribution? Our sampling distribution, X is 20 and standard deviation is? 3. Not 3. Divided by? Divided by Right, which is 0.5, and that's our uh, S over square root of N, and that's also what? What is 0.5? What's the, what, what? That's the margin of error. 0.5 is the margin of error. That's E. It's how much we're going to, oh no, it's not. It's not. Careful. Sorry, my fault. Point 0.5 is the number of standard deviations, right? What is the margin of error? It's how, what we're going to add to 20. What are we going to add to 20? <clears throat> yeah, we need, so we got, we need to be 2.03 two, uh, 2 of these above 20. Right? So we're going to go 20 plus 2.03 of these. That's the margin of error. What you're adding to 20 is your margin of error. So is that 1.015? Agree with that? Okay, and then we're going to go down that much, down that much, which would be 18 point. <coughs> right, and our margin of error was what we added to 20 to get the 21.015. So very similar, but because we're using the sample standard deviation, it requires this, this new distribution to get the t-score. The t-score, which we was before we used the z-score. So how do we interpret this? How do we interpret this? Somebody new? 95% confident that <coughs> that the what lies? The mean, of the mean of the population. The margin of error of 1.015 is 1.015 is the mean. But we're but but what are we 95% sure of about the population mean? Right. We're 95% sure that the population mean falls between 18.985 and 21.015. And that is a margin of error of 1.015. Okay, I want you to do for your sheet, we're going to do two more examples. So the first one we're going to do for your sheet is uh, 890. 890, do that, this one.
Um, a sample of 30 commuters yield the following commute times. So 30 commuters in New York City and their commute times. All right, and so it tells us that the The mean of the pop the sample is the mean commute time for the sample was twenty seven point nine seven minutes, and the standard deviation for that sample is ten point zero four minutes. And how big is the sample? Thirty. Okay. So what's our sampling distribution? Our sampling distribution is. Twenty-seven point nine seven and ten point oh four divided by square root of thirty. Tell me what that value is. Eight three three. Okay, and so we want a 90% confidence interval. So what is our degrees of freedom? 29. <coughs> and so alpha, what is alpha for 90%? 0 0.05. And This is not on your sheet, by the way. This is for your notes. If I'm, do, if I'm doing the problem to start, I'm not, I don't want you to just copy it down on the sheet, okay? Sorry. This is for your notes. Is this for the notes? This is for the notes, not the blue sheet. If I just start doing an example, that will never be for the blue sheet because yeah. I, I'm not interested in, in collecting something you just copied down for me. <clears throat> okay, so... Where were we? So we need to get the T. We've got 29 degrees of freedom, and our alpha is 0 0.05, and that gives a T value of? 1.699. I see 1.699. So we're going to go that many of what? of these up from 29.79 and that many of those down from 27.99 and that's our interval. So we're going to add 1.69 of our 1.833s. And what do we get when we do that? So take 1.699 times the 1.833, right? We're going to take that many standard deviations and go that far up from 27.97. Anyone got it? Somebody else get that? So what was that? We added 1.699, the number of standard deviations, times what our standard deviation is for that sampling distribution, 1.833. And that will give us this number here. And then we subtract that. And what do we get? 24.856. Somebody else get that? Interpretation? Right. And this, so we're 90% sure that the population mean of commute times, or that the, the, the mean of all commute times lies in this interval. And this is more realistic because it was all based on values we got from the sample. So everything that we were able to do came from the sample, which feels more realistic than knowing this kind of abstract thing from the population that... Um, the standard deviation from the population 
be more realistic, that would be unknown rather than known. Questions on this last example? Okay, so the next my stat lab is due a week from at the end of spring break, a week from Sunday, because I won't see you next week. So I don't know what that is. What is that? The twelfth or something or thirteenth? Thirteenth. So Sunday night, the thirteenth is when the next my stat lab is due. You have all the tools. Review the video if you forget. Forget, but try to start it soon. Have a wonderful break. Oh, you too.